Hey everyone, Mr. K here. Another Game Maker video. This one should be a short one. Just going to do some basic pathing this time around. Um, pathing, if you've never played with it before, is basically a system where you can take um, or tell your objects to follow a certain well path or route in your room. So before we hop into it, let's just take a look at what we have. We have an object that does nothing. We have a room filled with two of those objects and we have just the sprite that goes with the object. Um, this object can be, I mean, I guess typically you want to think of um, enemies and maybe the enemies are moving across the level. Uh, it could be power-ups and stuff too if you want to make a challenging game. I don't know, it's up to you, but um, the idea is we want to get this enemy, which we have two of, we want to get them to move in different paths. Having them do one is very simple and straightforward. Um, but the idea is we don't want all the enemies doing the same thing. We want enemies to do different things. So say for instance, this one we want to move left and right. And this one we want to move up and down. Well, if you think of it just a typical object um, scenario, what we would do is have to create two enemies. One enemy that would be programmed to move up and down and one enemy that's programmed to move left and right. Um, I'm going to show you a way where you don't have to create another you know, I'm sorry, another object, you can just basically edit the instance of your object, okay? Um, anyway, uh, I've rambled off for too much. Let's actually do something. So let's create a new path. This is the path um, user interface, GUI, whatever you want to call it. Um, it basically is a grid of your room. Um, it's pretty big if you blow it up, but what you can do is you can, if you have your room set up, you can pick which room and it will give you an idea of what you're looking at, okay? Now, I could create a path based solely on what, um, where my object is at the moment, but I really don't need to. I'm going to show you why. So I'm actually going to move this and just get rid of that as a distraction and just make a straight line. This is going to be for my object, my uh, for my path that's going to go left, right. So I'll call it path path left right hit okay oh you can also by the way you can tweak these points a little bit so if you want a little bit more fine tuning when I click it just creates another one and you can add insert delete or, or tweak any of the numbers you want um, in this case we want to get rid of that and there is my left right path hit okay I'm gonna make a second one and same deal here I'm gonna do a well similar deal I'm gonna do a vertical one so path up down And now I have two paths. Now the problem is, and I'll show you, if you do create and you use this function right here, this little drag and drop, you can pick which path you want to do. But this goes back to what I was saying before that you would need to create a new object for every different path. So you got, I don't know, say you got five different paths that you want to have, left, right, up, down, maybe one moving in diagonal, maybe one walking around in a circle. Um, or like a patrol around a certain area. You don't want it to create a separate object just for each and every one. So what you do is, well, you just basically ignore all that. Sorry. And in your room, on your individual objects, if you right click them and go to creation code, you get to put some code in. Now there's no drag and drop here, but you can still type in all the functions because the drag and drop functions still exist as code. So if we're putting in a path, it's called path start. And down at the bottom, remember your arguments, they're gonna tell you exactly what you need. You need the path. So for this one, I think I'm gonna do left, right. It might be what I said before. Speed of five, end action. We're gonna skip for a second. And then absolute and the deal here is, if I can open this back up, is basically if you want this to be, if I bring the room up, absolute means the object will go to this spot in the room. Make this, make this bigger. Your object will go to this exact spot in the room, travel to that exact spot in the room, and then whatever else you want to happen after that. If you leave it as just a relative path, which would be the op opposite of absolute, so false, we don't want absolute, 
your object will just literally follow this path wherever he is at the moment. So this is the starting point. So no matter where they are in the room, they will move to the right until they reach that distance. Not that spot, but that distance. In this case, we're going from 352 to 4, 544, so call it about 200. Your object will go about 200 pixels, and then what you want to happen after that, which we're, is up next. So relative will be just do this from where you are. Absolute would be go to this exact spot in the room. Okay, so a little bit of difference there. Play with it if you're not exactly sure what I'm talking about. Put it in as false and run it. Put it in as true and run it again and see if you can spot the difference. Now the one I skipped, I skipped only because I got to bring up a new window. We need to put in an end action. If I middle click on this path start, it brings up the help menu for the path start function. And if I scroll all the way down, by the way, you should probably read this over just so you get a general idea how this works. Um, you might find something a little more informative than what I'm giving you. But at the bottom, they give you options for what do you want to do when your object reaches the end of the path. You can have it stop, restart, continue, or reverse. I'm going to go with this one, path action reverse, because when, I, when it hits the end, I want it to go backwards. So close that out. Paste it in there and hit OK. In fact, I'm going to take all this and copy it because, oop, delete. I want to do the same thing with this one, but instead of left and right, I'm going to do up and down. So now with only one object but two paths, if I run this game, you will see both objects do different things. And assuming I don't have it bug out again, oh good. There was a strange issue I had when I was playing with this before that one of the paths, it was happened to be the up down one, would do it twice and then just start jittering. And once I modified the path a little bit, it fixed itself. Very weird. But anyway, there it is. One object, two different instances, each doing its own thing. So if you wanted to, you can, of course, get creative with it. So if you want one to go around in an area. And what you can actually do... Uh, one, two, three, one two, three, four. I want to add a fifth point. Can I duplicate this one? I know I'm kind of doing stuff off the top of my head here. So let's do add a point and oh, perfect. There we go. So we'll go here, 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 here. So what I'll do in this case, since I have five points, starting point, two, three, four, ending point, what I can have is now, I should call this, um, path box. If I make another nest, another one, creation code, paste, good. Path box, I can now use a different one. I can use restart because my path already goes right back to the beginning. So I can tell it to just start over again. I hope, probably should have rehearsed this a little bit better, but I wanted to give you an idea of what else you can do. And yep, there he goes, going around his box, okay? So anyway, there you go, no need to create multiple enemies. One enemy, as many different paths as, paths as you want. You just have to edit the, show it to you again, the creation code and pick whatever path you want. And that's it, bye.